Hey, what's up everybody, this is Ryan. In this screencast, I'm going to show you how you can create, read, update, and delete data using Vapor, a popular open source server-side Swift framework. It's actually remarkably easy. If you just make your objects conform to the model protocol, you're pretty much set and you can use a nice Swifty API. Let's give it a try. I have a simple Vapor project here. I've configured it to use a PostgreSQL database. I configured an object that conforms to the model protocol. You can see that it's pretty simple. It has a method to convert to and from the node class, which you can think of as an intermediate data representation, and two methods to create and revert the corresponding database table. Let's start by seeing how to create a new object in the database. I'll create a new route to handle a post request called new. Note that since we conform to model and created that initializer that takes a node, this makes it extremely easy to create a model object from JSON data. Note that I need to mark this as a var, not a let, because after saving a model, it needs to mutate the object, basically updating its ID to the value saved in the database. To save it to the database, all I have to do is call save. Note that I can return the acronym directly because if you conform to model, you also conform to node representable. Now I'll load up rested and I'll configure a post to create the new object. And it looks good. I can verify that it has saved the object to the database with PSQL. Okay, so that's create. What about read? Let's start by making a route that will return all acronyms in the database. I'll create a new route to handle a GET request called ALL. To get all acronyms in the database, all I need to do is call ALL on the acronym. And finally, I need to convert the result to a node with make node. If I try this out in a web browser, it works. At this point, you know how to create objects and how to read all objects. But often, you want to read just a subset of objects rather than all the objects. Fluent makes this extremely easy through its powerful query functionality. Let's take a look. Let's create a new route called FIRST to return the first acronym in the database. Anytime you want to get a list of a particular entity, run query on it. This returns a data set that you can subsequently filter. For example, we can run FIRST to get the first result. Let's create another route to return all the acronyms with the short field set to AFK. Again, we create a query, and this time we can run filter on it, specify a property name, and we, what we want it to be equal to. This will return just those entries. Let's try it the other way around and return anything but AFKs. It's a similar process. We run query and filter, but there's an overloaded version that takes to comparison type, and we'll choose not equals here. Now let's try these all out. I'll create a test entry, and then look at the first. Then I'll find the AFK entries, and finally the non-AFK entries. That's a lot of reading. At this point, we've covered create and read. Now let's cover the last two, update and delete. Let's create a new route that will let us override the long version of the first acronym. To do this, we'll create a new route called update and get the first acronym. We'll also look for a parameter called long passed by the user. Updating is simple. We just update the property and call save. If I build and run, I can check what the first entry is and then call update to give it a new definition. Now it's time for the final operation, delete. Let's create a route that deletes any entries with the short code AFK. To do this, I'll run a query as usual, but then I can just call delete on the data set. Now let's try this out. I can go to the delete AFKs and all the AFK entries are deleted. Crud! Is this screencast over already? At this point, you should understand how to create, read, update, and delete data from a database using Vapor. And now you may be eager to learn how to deploy this to a real-world database on Heroku. And that's what I'll be covering in the next screencast. Thanks for watching, and I'm out.